Hi, my name is Andrew Lowe. I'm a certified SOLIDWORKS expert here at Javelin Technologies. And in part two of this uh, video on building a crown surface in SOLIDWORKS, we're going to have to work on the corner. So we've used the boundary surface to build a nice transition between our flat surface on the bottom and our side surfaces. So what we're going to need to do here is actually extend these surfaces a little bit. If I look at it from the top, I can see that there's this wonkiness here, and that's going to result in a bad surface. I want to have a nice straight line across here. So what I'm going to do is, under my Surfaces tab, I'm going to use the Extend Surface. And I want to have Same Surface enabled, and I'm just going to extend an arbitrary amount. The next thing I'm going to need to do are build some planes. So I'm going to temporarily hide these surfaces, my Surfaces Body Folder. grab a plane, I'm going to build a plane through these two vertexes here. My second reference will be the top plane. And I'll do the same on this two vertexes here. Looks like I picked up the plane and not the vertex. Let's try that again. So my two vertexes. Now I can show these bodies again. I'm going to use the Trim Surface command, and my Trim tool will be the plane, and I'm going to remove the excess material here. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So now when I look at the part from the top, I have a nice, smooth, clean edge for my transition. We have two ways about going to build this corner fillet here. I can use the Fill Surface tool or the Boundary Surface. Let's do both and examine the results. So I'm going to use Fill Surface. And I'm going to need to select the various edges. And these edges here, I know I want to have curvature continuity. But the last edge I want to select is going to be this bottom edge, but I need to set it to be contact. And let's click OK and let's examine the result. It's pretty good. And we'll use our zebra stripes. Not bad, but I can see that it's not maintaining that curvature along this edge for some reason. Let's evaluate that feature. Uh, it would look like I only actually have two contacts, so let's set these to curvature. And we can see that the preview updates. Not bad. But I think we can do a little bit better with another boundary surface again. So we'll turn off the zebra stripes and hide the surface fill. Note that this surface fill technique is a really great example, but on a larger surface like this, we really need it to look really good. So let's try what the boundary can do. So once again, I'm going to pick my two edges. I'm going to create the boundary surface between. And sometimes when creating these surfaces, our connectors that join the surfaces together, they get a little crooked. So if I right click, flip connectors, I now see a much more accurate preview. We've only looked at direction one before, but I'd like the fillet to actually follow a second direction. So I'm going to pick these two edges, and now I have some options for end conditions of all of these faces. So I'm going to select curvature to face, curvature to face, and curvature to face. And here, Looks like I have relatively smooth combs. One thing we can also adjust is the tangent influence, and this is going to influence how much the other surfaces affect the new boundary surface we're working on. And if I increase them all the way to 100, you can see that in here we've got a little bit of wonkiness. We might need to dial this down a little bit. We should actually probably have pretty good results at zero. Looks like OK. Let's evaluate the zebra stripes. Here we're much smoother. I don't have any of that jitteriness that was associated before. I can see I have a nice, smooth, curvature, continuous transition across the four different surfaces. And this is what we're striving for in good surface modeling. So let's finish off this part. I'm going to delete the surface fill feature. And I'm going to use the knit surface knit these together into one solid hole. Finally, 
I am going to show my planes here. And let's use the mirror tool. Remember with surfaces we have to mirror the bodies. Mirror face plane. I'm going to knit my surfaces together. And let's mirror the completed surface body again. Mirror face plane will be our front plane. We're going to knit the surfaces. And let's build a top edge here. I'm going to use the fill surface. One nice thing about fill surface is if I right click, select open loop, it's going to grab the entire edge there, merge result, and I can also form a solid directly from my fill surface feature. I'm just going to hide my planes for a second here, and let's turn off the display of my edges. And here I've created a really smooth, nice looking bottom for what could become a tablet of some kind. Once again, I'll probably use the fillet tool and just add a slight radii here, maybe just one millimeter, just to smooth that edge off so we don't have a super sharp corner. And from here, I could go add some additional detailing and have a really nice consumer product. Let's look at this, this looks like in a really high gloss black plastic. Drag that onto the part. That looks really nice, really sharp highlights. And once again, in chrome. You can see that's really nice. And what would take this one step higher is using the replace face to have a really crowned surface here. You're welcome to try it on your own and see what you get. Thanks for watching.